If you're someone who's working in any creative capacity, you've probably found yourself in moments of self-doubt, burnout, and the inevitable creative block. We've all been there, which is exactly why I wanted to talk about the one documentary I believe every creative person should watch and the reasons I think it's so valuable. Drum roll, please. The Greatest Night in Pop. Now, this might come as a surprise to some of you, because on a first glance, it is just a simple music documentary and maybe your work has nothing to do with music at all. But trust me, no matter what you do, this documentary is a masterclass in collaboration, dealing with pressure and the essence of the creative process. In case you're not familiar with the story, it's about the 1985 song We Are The World, which featured some of the biggest music stars at the time, raised over $160 million for charity and it was recorded in a single night. So with all that in mind, here are my 5 key takeaways from it. 1. There will never be enough time. One of the things that made a huge impression on me was seeing that they barely had any time to pull this thing off. In order to make this song a really big deal and raise a lot of money for charity, they wanted to feature as many artists as possible, which ended up being almost 50. But trying to get the schedules of all those superstars to fit was just always going to be a logistical nightmare. That is, until they realized that the American Music Awards were right around the corner and for one night only, everyone was going to be in LA. And because of that, Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson had only about 10 days to write arguably one of the most important songs in their careers. And it's not just the song, but just imagine the challenge of trying to coordinate so many artists and crew members and find the studio and the gear and make sure the song is finished and everyone has gone to the demo four days before they had to record while keeping it a secret from the public and having much less time than they would have liked to. The reason it left such a huge impression on me is because hearing all the names involved and how important this project was, you would think they have all the time in the world and all the resources they want, but no, this whole thing could collapse at any given moment. It also reminded me of Parkinson's law, which states that any work will expand to fit the amount of time that you allocate to it. So next time you're working on something and you get a little bit frustrated with your deadlines, just remind yourself that sometimes it is just the way it is. Number two, it is never finished until it is. In my opinion, one of the best part of this documentary is that we get to be FY on the wall and experience the whole night as it unfolds. And in doing so, you do get a feeling of the creative process some of those legendary artists had. You see them pitching lyrics, throwing things around, changing things on the spot, thinking, brainstorming, and it's just a boiling pot of creativity. In fact, Quincy Jones, the producer of the song, put a sign at the entrance that said check your ego at the door. And it worked, because even though there was a little bit of a friendly competition, everyone was trying to contribute. In the film business, there's a saying that a movie is written three times. When it's written, when it's filmed, and when it's edited. So next time you're working on something with other people, be open to ideas and be aware that a project is constantly evolving. Next up, you're not an imposter. I'm willing to bet that at some point we've all experienced the imposter syndrome, or that feeling that we're not as good as we or other people think we are, and that is completely normal. And if you don't believe me, all you need to see is those legendary musicians being absolutely terrified, anxious, and feeling like they don't belong in this song. There are actually two standout moments for me. One is when Huey Lewis gets told in the last minute that he has gotten a line right after Michael Jackson, and he's absolutely terrified, but also his attitude is just fantastic. I mean, it was just one line, but my legs were literally shaking. I sang him out of tune just to see if anybody would notice. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is Bob Dylan being really uncomfortable this whole time and practically being unable to record his part until Stevie Wonder gets to the piano and being the great mimic he is, sings the song in Bob Dylan's voice and shows him how he would sound in it and you can immediately see the change in his face. So, imposter syndrome is normal, just ignore it. Number four, embrace the pressure. As I mentioned before, the whole song, as well as the music video for it, was recorded in one single night, from late in the evening to early in the morning. They had one shot to do it and it had to go well. So they had so many microphones and cameras and cables and people running around and with so many moving parts, you are about to have technical difficulties. There was an immense amount of pressure on every single person in the room, including the artists themselves. So you just have to embrace the pressure because pressure means that you're challenging yourself, which means that you're growing. And lastly, trust the process. In this documentary, you'll see that it was a very long night with a lot of hard work. So naturally, 
There were some moments of tension, people got tired, irritated, and at some point things were looking quite grim. It actually reminded me of this graph I saw in Still Like an Artist, the life of a project, and this whole experience perfectly mirrored it. When in the beginning it was very good vibes and people were singing together, getting each other's autographs, then they hit that slowly descending low point moment when things were not looking as fun but managed to push through it and by the end of it when the song was finally recorded, there was nothing but happiness and tears of gratitude. You know this really satisfying feeling when you know that you've worked really hard but it was worth it. And that is another reason why I love this documentary so much. It just gives you this very bubbly optimistic feeling about creativity. And the ending is very nice too. So if this video maybe also gave you a little bit of that feeling, make sure to subscribe because I have a ton of exciting things planned for this channel and I'll see you in the next one.